Happy New Year, first of all. Uh, Pedalboard Chronicles Part 1. Uh, no one wants to be Pedalboard Guy. and uh, Inadvertently, I've been Pedalboard Guy before and taken every single pedal I own and threw it on one board and be like, oh, let's take that over to somebody's house and jam. And it doesn't work. You don't want to do that. So I um, decided to do four pedal boards, two small, one for guitar, one for bass, for jamming and songwriting and, you know, more practical. And then like one for shows for each, like a big, huge guitar board and a big, huge bass board. So here is the small bass pedal board, my first draft. All right, starting with your basic uh, Boss T3. Well, it's a Wazicraft. It's not the basic one, so. Um, but it's just amazing. You can't go wrong with the Boss tuners. I love those. Into the Boss GEB7. This is the first bass pedal I ever owned, and it's still rocking. I really use it pretty flat. Maybe a little bit of a mid-spike to it, um, but generally pretty flat. What I do set it for is for the volume switching because I can bring the level of it up and it not only brings the level of the EQ up, it actually brings the level of the signal up. So when I go to switch, say, from my 62B ba 62P bass that has like a really high output uh, comparatively to my bass 6 or the jazz bass, which have kind of lower level output, Put and aren't as wild sounding, I can kind of kick that up a little bit. And so when I kick that on, the levels match up. So, you know, I don't have to don't have to throw the sound man into what the hell's going on with his stuff when I switch bases. Uh, it's going to go from that into the uh, BMF FX Fat Bastard. Now, I love BMF FX. Everything I've ever played through by BMF is pretty much amazing. This is no exception. It is a straight clean boost. Does not. It's it's very 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 transparent. The son of Fat Bastard is what Ryan has on his board, and it has like a little bit of a mid spike and a bass roll off, so that when you hit it for solos, your guitar can like jump up and level, but it cuts a little bit. This um, I use to basically blast the shit out of my preamp tubes. Like if I'm using an SVT, you can't really crank an SVT up to the point where it gets that really pleasing harmonic distortion like pre-breakup. Like, I mean, you're, the sound men will fucking hate you. I mean, they're already grumpy enough. Love you guys, but... Uh, so this allows me to drive the shit out of those preamp tubes at lower volume levels so that I can get that like harmonic distortion on the breakup that I really, you know, it just sounds great on bass. Like, so that's what that's for. And that goes into your basic amplifier, liquefier chorus. Um, this thing I started using um, on rock songs, like the more rock and roll, rock bass stuff, like um, heavier songs. If you can tell that it's on, like if somebody's listening to the band play and they're like, oh, the bass player has an Ampeg liquefier chorus on it, then it's too much. You need to back that off a little bit. Um, but it sounds great, like underneath everything. It's just kind of a little, it adds a little bit of character and it makes it just, I don't know, I like it. Thickens things up just a little. It's great. So, bass players, the chorus is your friend if you don't use it too much and kick it off on more traditional type of stuff, you know. So, anyway, ignore how dirty my board is. I literally just threw this together. Um, as such, I don't have the independent power supply hooked up yet. I have uh, a one spot just to kind of test it out. This is not in the signal chain yet, um, but it will be when I get the independent power supply up. And it's uh, Baseballs by Electro Harmonix, the Nano, because it's all I need. And then it's going to come out of the uh, chorus into the Nano. I use this uh, as a, just an envelope filter. It does have a distortion switch on it. Um, I might kick that on for the intro of Sun's Gonna Rise sometimes, but I don't know. Um, we'll see how that goes. 
if they won't even play that song anymore. Don't even know about any of that. Um, I used to use a wah wah pedal, which is going to go on my big board. And the wah wah pedal kind of had a sig it has a signal boost that whenever I'd kick that on, I didn't need the distortion on. So um, you know, I'd just kick that on, hit the wah wah, and that was the intro to "Sun's Gonna Rise." Um, but really, it's a great uh, envelope filter. It sounds fantastic and uh, built like a tank. So I've had it for fucking years, forever. And we'll go out of the baseballs into this Ampeg SCRDI, which is, you know, it's your it's a great DI. Like, it, it sounds great not on. And what I mean by that is, you know, this has an on-off switch. So when it's off, it's just a line-level XLR out or ground lift, you know, with a ground lift. And uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a great DI for acoustic guitar or bass, anything you need to DI. Um, you kick that on, and um, it kind of thickens the sound up a little bit. I will have used, I use it with the bass six, sometimes the J bass, but I don't dig these. Uh, they probably work better with active pickups. I use all passive pickups on all my instruments. Um, so my Telecaster does have an active Fishman pickup under the bridge, but it doesn't apply here. Um, all this stuff I use pretty much straight up and down and really flat. I use it just pretty much as a DI. Um, sometimes I do use the scrambler as an effect. It's kind of like a fuzz slash distortion. Remind you kind of of the Ampeg 360, 361. Excuse me, the Acoustic 361. 360, 361, uh, like fuzz that was on board the unit. It's similar, not exactly, but kind of nasally like that. Uh, still cool, but again, it's just like this, or even the, you know, the compressor. Any it effects on bass, if you can tell, like if you're listening to the band play and then you're like, wow, wow, the... Bass player has an Ampeg SCRDI distortion on, and he's using the Scrambler, then you're using too much. It's too much. So don't do that. Um, be judicious with the blend and the drive on it. Um, other than that, it's a really versatile piece of equipment. Um, you can go, you know, send an MP3 player or CD player or whatever in, and uh, put your headphones or earbuds in the other side, and you can uh, play along the recordings like that's, you know, when uh, people are sending me songs to learn. I uh, do that. It's great. Um, but it is plastic, and uh, it's really tall. I actually took the bottom of it off so that it stays flush with the other pedals and doesn't stick out so much. So this would be great for, um, like, this instance of putting it on like a rehearsal board or you know a songwriter type board but i'm not gonna put it on my main pedal board for shows so uh scott from bmf effects has uh, alluded to the possibility of a bmf uh bass preamp di coming possibly with fuzz capabilities um and also byron here in columbia from byron amps um does make some bass preamps with DI as well. And I've put the bug in his ear that if and when he comes up with more of those, I would most definitely love to check that out. So um, I will go out of this. So the last thing in this chain is going to be the Ampeg. Oh, my board's so dirty. These pedals have had many, many miles on them, y'all. Yeah, we've played a lot of shows. Um, <laughs> this is yeah, the Ampeg uh, Opticomp. Um, it's just like anything. If, if you can tell that it's on, you're like, wow, the bass player's using a lot of compression, then you're using way too much compression. Uh, it shouldn't choke off the sound, but it should kind of even things out a little bit. And uh, so I just put a little bit on at the end uh, to make everything, you know, just a little bit more feasible going into the amp um, so that it doesn't spike things out a whole lot signal-wise. And, and that uh, in the business is that. Um, I don't know. I think that'll work. Looks, looks good to me. Uh, it sounds pretty good you know one spot and no no signal 
no effects loop or anything uh, with this one. It's just going to be like in and out, you know, directly in the line. Um, my V4 doesn't have an effects loop. My SVT is the only bass amp I have with an effects loop. Oh, and the Mesa Subway has an effects loop, I think. But yeah, so I, I don't know. I think I'm just going to do everything in line because I don't have an effects loop on the V4 or the basement. So, <laughs> Happy New Year, like I said. Um, see how this works.